Oh no, what are we looking at? For today's Sunday case study, I have a challenging one for you guys. I've got a 72 year old female who comes in to see me for back pain. She's had a number of spinal decompression surgeries over the years, about five in total. She states her pain is in her entire lower back. It hurts throughout the lumbar spine and it's there all the time. It's when she washes dishes, it gets worse when she cleans the house and she just wants a quality of life back. Here are the x-rays of her lower back that were done in my office. She's had so much conservative treatment over the years. She's had physical therapy, injections, chiropractic management, medications, and nothing seems to work. She says she really doesn't want any more surgery on her low back. And in addition to that, she's a diabetic and her T-score, which is her bone density, shows that she has osteoporosis. Her MRI isn't really that helpful. It just shows a lot of degenerative changes throughout her lumbar spine. So is there anything else at this point I can offer this patient to help alleviate her axial lower back pain? Leave your thoughts below and I'm going to go through the whole case tomorrow and explain to you what I think that we can offer this patient to help give her some quality of life. So let's go through the answers of the case study that I presented yesterday. Remember we said this patient was a 72 year old female who presented to me with chronic lower back pain. She's had back pain for so long that she can't even remember a life without back pain. She's tried extensive conservative treatment, including physical therapy, chiropractic management, injections, medications, alternative treatments such as stem cells. She's even tried inversion, red light therapy, you name it, she's tried it. She's even had five surgeries for her back and none of them have helped her. Her x-rays look like this, which showed lumbar scoliosis and her MRI was not really that helpful. It just had a multitude of degenerative changes throughout the entire lumbar spine. There was a lot of great suggestions in the comments section on this case. Honestly, if this patient was in great health and really was interested in additional surgery in her lumbar spine, she would probably be a good candidate for a lumbar fusion. But did any of you guys pick up on the red flags that I waved? I mentioned that she had osteoporosis and she was a diabetic, which are two major risk factors for a failure of a scoliosis fusion surgery. Now, sure, we could treat her osteoporosis and maybe try to build up her bone density. We could control her diabetes to make her an optimum candidate. However, she didn't want any of that, and I thought I had a better suggestion for her. And there was many of you guys that actually agreed with me. What about spinal cord stimulation? Spinal cord stimulation is a great option for someone like her who is often labeled in this group of failed back syndrome. And I don't really particularly like that terminology. And there is a proposal to switch to this to persistent spinal pain syndrome, which I think is more appropriate. Regardless of the diagnosis, this patient needs some help. She's tried everything and she just has a debilitated quality of life because of her pain. Now, before any of you guys jump in here and say, oh, a spinal cord stimulator won't help anyone with just axial back pain, stop. There has been a recent article published in the Journal of Neurosurgery about a multi-center randomized control trial of patients with refractory non-surgical back pain and the success of spinal cord stimulation at high frequency. That essentially showed that at 12 months, patient had significant improvements in their quality of life, their pain levels, and significant reduction in their opioid use. How amazing is that? Finally, a population of patients that aren't a candidate for surgery or don't want surgery that have predominantly lower back pain may be able to gain success out of high frequency spinal stimulation. Now this video has already gotten really long, so I'm gonna go through everything at length about spinal cord stimulation in a full video tomorrow, so stay tuned.